I know many of you out there are going to say, Coach, it's too early for you to say that the SWAT West is going to come down to possibly this game right here. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, I honestly believe whoever wins this game between Grandma State versus Prairie View is going to have control of the West in the SWAT Conference. Now, there's a lot of implications that's going to go into this game because remember, Alcorn State lost to Prairie View as well as Texas uh, Southern. Texas Southern lost to Grambling as well. So things get, things get ready to heat up real quick with this game. But guys, we're going to go ahead and jump into exactly how this game is going to go right after this. What's your favorite coach back at it again? Ten toes down, about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow Leader Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get all upcoming videos. For all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, and share these videos. And tap your in the free to attempt to come on in. It's not for positive vibes. We just have a good time talking about HBCU sports. And don't forget, you can follow us on all social media platforms. The links are listed down below in the description. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get on in this thing. Because I'm be like, Coach, you out your freaking mind. Yes, the state fair clash between Grambling State and Prairie View A&M can have some serious implications. I said that in the beginning. Because remember, I stated in the game between uh, Prairie View and Texas Southern, I said whoever wins that game is going to come out of the West. Funny thing is, looking at how Grambling played last week against Texas Southern, very well could be a shift if Grambling is able to get this game. Looking at what the G-Man was able to do against Texas Southern last week, you got to you know you got to really look at things from a standpoint of they ran the ball a lot last. Probably put the ball up a few times in that game last week, but it was to the point where Grambling was able to establish their running game and they kept their foot on the gas. Now I know a lot of you out there going to get upset with coach when I say this, but you know what? Prairie View and them have been the comeback kids all season long thus far especially with them being down 17 points in the third quarter against Texas Southern and scoring a touchdown before the fourth quarter started, getting them in position for them to make a comeback run in that game in which they won in overtime. Now, last week, the game against uh, Prairie View AM and m and Alcorn State, Prairie View was able to kick a uh, walk-off field goal for them to win the game 23-20. to But now that we got that out of the way, let's look at exactly how this thing going to size up. Both of these teams definitely can get after it out there on the field when it comes to running that ball. Now, PV got Amai Antoine rushing the ball 16 times for 73 yards, averaging 4.6 yards per carry. Uh, Caleb Johnson rushed the ball 10 times for 62 yards, averaging 6.2 yards per carry. And then you had Connor Wishham rush the ball five times for 15 yards, averaging three yards per carry. This was last week against Alcorn State. I'm trying to set this up for you to see where I'm going to go with this. Now, Grambling State, on the other hand, they had Chance Williams, who just went off last week, in which he had a big game, rushing the ball 19 times for 174 yards, averaging 9.2 yards per carry. Chalk Floyd had 17 rushes for 88 yards, averaging 5.2 yards per carry. And then you had Killian Elder, who looked to give the G-Man a little extra spark out there on the field, rushing the ball as well last week. So definitely understand that both teams have running backs that can establish the run out there for their teams on the field. One thing that I did like about Grambling State was the fact that they were running that ball so hard last week, they were looking to establish that grown man type of physicality out there against the Texas Southern defense, letting them know, hey, listen, if you come up in here and think you're going to tackle us, you know, one arm tackle us or swipe right our shoes and we just going to fall down, you better think again. You better get up underneath your shoulder pads and come in here and get this work. Because if you're looking for us to just lay down for you out here on this field and not continue to keep toting this tater, you can forget it. This week, I honestly believe looking at both of these teams, how I sized them up offensively, they kind of have some similarities where you have Conley, he, you can add him into that running back uh, group as well because if he needs to, he'll pull that ball down and take off in a heartbeat. And that's something that the linebackers for uh, Grambling State is going to have to make sure that they keep him in the pocket and don't allow him to get out of that pocket and take off and run. If they allow him to run, you're going to carve that defense up all, all day long. Now, on the other side, you have... Uh, you have Crowley who has no problem with pulling that ball down and run, but he more so is going to get surgical on you looking to carve you up, throwing darts down the field to those Grambling State Tigers uh, receivers that's going to be out there on the field looking to catch passes from. Prairie View a and there was a lot of drop balls last week in which you cannot drop no passes against Grambling State this week because they are looking to hunt. They understand what's on the line. They got their first swag win 
of the season against Texas Southern. So now they're looking to make you number two. You guys already have two looking to make Grammar State number three. That being said, we can't afford to drop no balls out there on the field this week. Deuce Jenkins, Kobe Cavill, and Trey John Spiller, you guys cannot afford to drop any passes out there on the field. Matter of fact, no receiver for Prairie View A&M can afford to drop any passes out there because, trust me, if a ball is tipped up in the air, Grambling State is looking to get that ball to give their offense additional opportunities to put points up on the board. The same thing goes for Grambling State. Uh, Lyndon Rash, Antonio Jones, and Joshua Quiet. You guys got to make sure you secure those balls when those passes are thrown to you by Crawley and make sure you get what they give to you. And then, you know, hey, make sure you just don't fumble the ball. Make sure you just don't do anything silly outside of the norm that's going to allow Prairie View to get additional bites at the apple to put points up on the board against your team. Now, this game is going to come down to who's going to make the most mistakes in this game. Now, Grandma State University, I hate to say this, guys, but you guys are penalized way too much than you need be. And right now, you guys are last in the swag when it comes to penalties. You guys are penalized at a very high clip. While Prairie View A&M, they are further up the line. I think they may, may be fifth or sixth as far as we're being penalized out there on the field of play. Grandma State definitely leads in red, red zone scoring on the offensive side of the ball. So that's, like I stated before, I think they're like 17 or 18 in scoring touchdowns against opposing teams. So that's something that everybody got to keep in mind as well. If Grambling is able to march that ball down the field, they're going to look to put points up on the board against anybody that they score against. So if you're not able to keep them from getting in that red zone and just force them to stay behind the sticks instead of letting them get ahead of the sticks and being able to put um, – being able to run whatever plays they want to run out of their playbook against your team, it's going to be a long day. Again, uh, Conley, if those receivers get free for Prairie View and them out there on the field, Conley's definitely going to let that ball fly down the middle of the field looking to hit one of those receivers to be wide open in the end zone for six points. So this is going to be a great game to see. This is another two athletes that I was able to see this summer and meet where they were out there at the uh, HBCU quarterback camp, quarterback receivers camp. They were talking a bunch of trash out there. Conley was a little quiet, though. He was just sitting back, sizing up everybody. But he still felt the same way he felt when I talked to him uh, at the SWAT Media Day. Uh, was it last, not, not this past season, but last year. Last year when I spoke with him, and he was saying, you know, hey, look, they're coming out there to kick some ass. From his words, not mine. But I'm just saying, this young man is definitely going to be laser-focused, as well as Crowley looking to lead their teams into this game to see who's going to blink first as far as them being able to capitalize on mistakes. Guys, this is going to be a great game to watch uh, between these two teams. I definitely want to see how these uh, defenses uh, size up against one another. As I stated before, the DBs, you know, some folks think that Prairie View uh, DBs, they're not, you know, they can get scored on easily. I don't think so. Looking at that Alcorn State game, side, yeah, I saw where Alcorn was dinking and dumping to the uh, running back coming out of the backfield. You had a lot of slip screens. You had a lot of uh, bubble routes, things of that nature that they ran out there, which allowed them to keep moving that ball up and down the field. Yes, the quarterback did, uh, Allen, I believe, did throw a couple of passes down the field against that Prairie View a &M defense, but some of those passes were not caught. So you got to give them credit for that. Miles Crowley, he's looking to put that dart out there to that receiver where he's going to drop it in that basket, allowing the receiver to catch it and not the defensive back to get a hold of that ball. So this is definitely going to be a close game. But I'm going to tell you this right now. I honestly feel Coach McDowell has Prairie View a and onto something over there at, at Prairie View a and right now. And looking at how these young men have come back, I think they really believe in what they have as far as a team looking to get out there and just knock off any opponent that they run across this upcoming season. One thing for certain I say is this, looking at what Hugh Jackson is doing at Grambling State, you got to applaud him for it because I honestly feel those young men over there are starting to believe in the system that he's looking to run and the culture that he's bringing to that program. This game is going to be a tight game. And you know what? I'm going to go against the grain on what I said earlier. I think Grambling, I think this is Grambling time to get this game. I'm going to go with Grambling on this game because I honestly believe that they're going to make sure that they don't screw this up by making simple-minded mistakes. If they come out there and they make the crazy mistakes that they have been making throughout the season thus far, Prairie View is going to knock them off, and I honestly feel that Prairie View is going to ride this wave from here on out to make sure that they are the ones that are uh, representing for the West in the SWAC championship game later on this season. But, guys, Coach going to go ahead and get up on out this thing. Leave your comments below and let me know. Leave your score predictions because whoever gets the score right on this game Coach buying your lunch. So make sure you leave your predictions down below 
and let me know who you got winning this game. But, guys, Coach going to go ahead and get up on out this thing. But until next time, be the one and lead.